This is Cosmographia, the Randall Carlson Podcast. are back, ladies and gentlemen, from our trip, which we will be talking about shortly here. Uh, so it's glad to, we're glad to be back in the studio. Oh yeah, had a great time, and uh, we're joined by Randall and Brad and Robert, who was who organized the trip we went on. Mike is also here, but he's concealed, lurking for now. Uh, but he'll join us later. So, but Robert, thank you for thank you for showing up, man. We're glad to talk about this trip while it's still fresh in our minds, like Randall was saying before the show. Yeah, great to be here, guys. I really had such a good time with you guys. It was a pleasure meeting you, and what a cool time, right? Yeah, it was a lot of fun. Yep. So, Randall, how do you want to... uh, Do you want to go through each site we went to, or do you want to just talk in general? Well, yeah, let's talk in general, but yeah, we could certainly uh, talk about the sites, obviously. Um, You know, I think we kind of was a mix of archaeology and geology. Wouldn't you say that kind of... I think so, yeah. Sums it up, yeah. We didn't really get any paleontology. Well, wait a minute. Sort of we did. We'll come to that. Um, because uh, Robert didn't participate in that because that was on the way home. But That's um, right. That's right. Right. Um, but, yeah, we had a great time, and Robert did a fantastic job of organizing it. And I was certainly yep. relieved that I wasn't having to do all that or think about it. <laughs> And whenever it got like, I got concerned, like, oh my God, it's, it's going to, are we going to pull this off? And I guess, I don't know. I'm going to worry about it. That's Robert. Robert. <laughs> yeah. Robert. <laughs> Let, him, Robert. About that. The other Let him worry about this. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And I thought the organization was an excellent mix of organized, but also relax. You know, there was, it was, it was really good. Yeah. It wasn't too strict. We yeah play it by ear and uh, it was, it was really great. Yeah. A bit of free, fo- sure. free form with our time there. Yeah. Yeah. Not yeah too absolutely. rigid. Yeah. I think it sometimes, awesome you know, when, when things are going well, you have to let that moment roll on a little bit and not stick to the structure too much. Sometimes I get in trouble for that. <laughs> well, I <laughs> did notice you, you, you lightened up a little bit towards the end. Those first few days, it was like 7 a.m. or 6 30 a.m. You're cracking the whip. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> I'm like, oh man, I didn't fall asleep till three <laughs> thirty. Yeah, I noticed that wasn't going over so well, so I thought, okay, we better uh, relax that and no just press. go with the flow a little bit in the morning. So by but, the time we got the Mexican hat, you guys are having such a good, uh, great time back there on the patio. I didn't want to interrupt it. You know. Oh. <laughs> yep, that's how it goes. Well, we had cool some conflicts with the uh, the Indian reservations. The Navajo lands were shutting things down, and they were having some scares down there in New Mexico and Arizona. So we had to kind of adjust and, you know, on the fly, come up with new places to go and uh, use up some extra time. So, yeah, you got to be able to be flexible and ended up being just right, if you ask me. Yep. yep. Well, we were disappointed that we couldn't get into Canyon de Shea. Um mm which I did not really understand why you would have the overlook shut down. Um, I could see, you know, having the, the restaurants and the lodge there in Chinle shut down, but I didn't understand why shut down the overlooks, you know, mm-hmm. I don't know, but they were, so we didn't get, we didn't get to do Canyon to shape. And of course we wouldn't have been able to have done the, the tours in there um, in the bottom of the Canyon, which I have yet to do. But they're only, you know, they're only guided tours. You know, you have to hire a Navajo guide and they'll take you in there and, and, uh, and take the tour and you get to see the the cliff dwellings and the petroglyphs and things. Um, Hmm. plus get a different perspective on the Canyon from the bottom rather than the rim. So, Hmm. but that's the future. That one's, uh, scheduled for the next one. Yeah. There we go. So first sight. What was the first thing we went and saw? Meteor Crater. Yeah. Meteor Crater. And um, 
maybe Kyle, could you sing us a few lines from uh, Taking It Easy? <laughs> Just to get us in the mood. Winslow. Standing <laughs> on the corner. That one, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I'll pass, but uh, yeah, yeah. yeah we and went we were El Paso, but that's the last day. I don't change the subject. We were Sorry we were that. late. Uh, <laughs> Kyle and I were a little late. We didn't get there until the morning of. Oh, that's you, right. You guys were yeah. not with us at Meteor Crater, right? But we were determined to go see it anyway. So we flew in, landed early on the day you guys started the tour. But we had to drive from Phoenix, and we just went straight to Meteor Crater, even though you guys basically had shown up there and then left. Uh, so Kyle and I went and paid to get in and went up there and had a look. And of course it's, it's mind expanding and mind blowing to see that enormous hole in the ground, uh, with the uplifted strata and the blasted area around it. Um, yeah, it's yeah. really just, you know, and of course the, the piece of the meteor that's in the mu museum is really, is really interesting too, but really it's the hole that is just, <laughs> It's a big uh, hole. Yeah, it's a big hole, and it's uh, it's just it's even looking at it, you know, it's 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 too big to comprehend. Uh, you know, it's, you look at that far cliff wall, and you're like, I know that that's actually farther away than I than I think it is. It's just, but a lot of the things we were looking at were like that. Uh, oh yeah, you got some the things in the bottom for scale. You know, there's an ast yeah. astronaut standing there and a flag and a few things, but it, it's almost like they ought to have something that's 150 feet wide. Yeah. You know, that you could see, okay, well, here's the hole, but here, this was the size of the object. And then right. there's a little chunk of it, the, the biggest one that was found right there, whole single. Right here. Yeah. Almost pure iron. Yeah. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's, and of course, this is just a little, little chunk of it. The, the original object was probably about 150 feet in diameter. Here we go. Yeah. You whip the whole that around at 40,000 miles an hour. Yeah, it'll do some damage. Yeah. yeah. And let's see. Here we go. Here, I haven't had a chance yet to stitch this together in a panorama. Maybe by next time I will. But you can kind of see here we are by the edge of the hole, and you can see some folks up there for scale. Yeah. Um, interesting thing about this is you can you can really begin to see the uh, the central, the uplift of right. the, uh, the surrounding strata. And you said it, it it had it had lakes in it in the past at several times. Is is that what you well at least us? once at least once at, at it had least a, once yeah okay. it had a lake in it. I didn't know that. That's really interesting. I wonder how how mm. much sediments is down in the bottom there. Yeah, so they did have a little fenced in. There's a little fenced area down in the very bottom, right? That has where the, shaft the mine shaft is, and then they put a scale, you know, an astronaut suit down there on the fence, and they have one of the telescopes. Aimed at it. at it, so you yeah. can look and you can see. Okay, there's a full size. What would be a person down? And then here. when you move your yeah. eye away from the telescope, you're like, I can't even see. I that. can't see it. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> Let's so see is, here. It's Somebody had told us afterward that you know they asked one of the uh, administrators in there, and and you can get a tour because they still do it for schools and go down into the bottom, but you gotta you gotta set up a special tour. And and she said that. Uh, was was that you that said that, Kyle? Did you guys? Yeah, talk that to was him? us. Yeah. Oh, okay, so yeah, you don't really get the perspective unless you're down in there, right? And you realize what a hole it is. Yeah, she gave us the contact information for the geologist that takes college students down in there. Uh, we told her Excellent. we we did some podcasting and that we talked about this kind of stuff and that we would love to maybe talk to that guy, possibly get a tour arranged, maybe get him on the show. So. That'd I'm guessing that this is the astronaut suit yeah. right here. That that actually is the or, um, furnace t or uh, some type of um, – that's a machinery. Yeah, a oh, barrel. I see. Yeah, that's it's pretty not large. a gas tank or something. Yeah, you so. can see the fence there around the, yeah. uh, around the right. shaft. The uh, astronaut is – Oh, inside so, there. Yeah. yeah. By the fence. Yeah. 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 This little see spot right here is probably the astronaut. <laughs> that little <laughs> thing right there, right? <laughs> He's over Man. to the right. I can't tell sure. what you're pointing at, buddy. Oh, yeah. well, you don't see my 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 cursor. Oh, that. <laughs> <laughs> what are you laughing at? <laughs> I don't. Uh, know. He's he's over to the right, but I can't even make him out. He's, okay. Yeah, that, over, that's, a, I think that's where speck. he is right there. Yeah, he's, he's in there somewhere, right? Yeah, three right. pixels again. He's back. Yeah. <laughs> okay. 
It's a huge, it's a huge gigantic hole. hole. <laughs> okay, yes. so we've con- yeah. we've all concurred on that. Yes, we've yeah. agreed that it is a very large hole, <laughs> and made by a very small meteorite, comparatively speaking. You know, this is the thing is, this is a baby. Can you imagine what a mile wide meteorite would do? Yeah, it, it, I agree. It's a baby, but it's also, it was 150 feet of solid iron. So that, that makes it a little more punchy, maybe. I mean, how, yeah. how big, how big do you think like a chondritic meteor would have to be, or a, you know, even a commentary one would have to be to make that similar hole? Co- well, be, to be- a con- a, we already know that a cometary one is going to do going to detonate in the atmosphere. I mean, the estimated uh, diameters of the Tunguska object are about the same as this. Right. I mean, how big do you think like a comet one would have to be to make this same hole? As oh, I, as, uh, uh, well, okay. Know, so probably- it has to get it has to hit the ground. It yeah. would probably make a very different kind of a hole because it's okay. so much less dense. It would probably be a much shallower hole. All for right. one thing, and wider, wider and shallower. Okay. And therefore, probably more prone to being, um, you know, more Erased. quickly uh, uh, obliterated or obscured by okay. sedimentary infill and erosion and so on. Um, a chondritic, which is about halfway in between. Yeah. Uh, I don't know, maybe twice twice the size. Yeah, so 300. Yeah, something like that, feet, probably. Maybe yeah. up to 500 feet, uh-huh, depending yeah. on what it was made of. Yeah. Yeah. The, uh, 150 feet is like 5% of the, the width is 3000 or 3000 plus. Right. So you're 5% of the width. So yeah, you know, a stony might be up to 15 or 20%, oh, but, but okay. like Randall said, you know, not, not as deep. Right. Well, it was so, a great, it was a great choice to start off the entire tour. I think. <laughs> yeah, it was, that, that was the best direction to go actually, uh, to hit rock art ranch. And I was oh, trying okay. to take right. us to places where we wouldn't be shut down. Right. Right. So I checked everything out in advance and I knew rock art ranch was going to be open. So I thought, wow, rock art ranch is a really cool place that not many people know about. Yeah. Yeah. It was. It sure uh, was. So that was the next destination. That's where we finally met up with you guys. Yeah, uh, yeah. You guys came rolling in. I was like, "Who are those guys?" <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we're like, "Hey!" <laughs> yeah, that's definitely one of my favorite places. Um, I just really like it. I I like that it's on private land too, so you can. I don't know. It's a little more secluded. Um, mm-hmm. But that canyon was just awesome. Way out there in the middle of nowhere. Beautiful place. Amazing okay. artwork all over the place. Well, yeah, it was special. I mean, it, right. The canyon itself was interesting. Just like yes. you said, it's just out there. And I'm guessing, I haven't studied the maps and the topography yet, but I'm guessing that flows through that canyon lead into the headwaters of Little Colorado. That's right. It's yeah. the Chevron Canyon, and you're right. You're exactly right. Yeah. Ah. Okay, Chevron Canyon. Okay, yeah, that's what I Chev- figured. Chevron. And- Chevlon. Chevlon. Okay. Yeah. Chevlon. Right. Okay. So I was a little disappointed. We didn't get to get, uh, go to the, um, Canyon of little Colorado, mm. but under the circumstances, yeah. And, and, you know, we would have had to have done some walking. Um, and, uh, we and had a caravan it, and uh, definitely some of the vehicles weren't up for some of yeah. the off-roading that might've been necessary for part of it to yeah. make the, to make the walk shorter. Well, right. also the uh, they ended up shutting that down over the weekend. It was open before. Oh, so little did we know it was shut down anyways. Even if we would have made it on time, we weren't going in that day. What was shut down actually? The Colorado, uh, Colorado. Well, they have this. They have this point that we were going to go to. I think it's called Navajo Point, and you drive down to a certain part, and then you walk. And that was open before, and uh, after the weekend, they shut all that down. Like they put the curfew on, on uh, the res. So and mm. and remember, Cameron Trading Post was closed. It, right, that was right. Supposed to be open as well. well. There are several access points that you know, just basically two ruts in the in the desert to drive out there. So sure. yeah, I didn't know I didn't know that all those had gates on them. I thought there were other ways to get down in there. I think they're connected with the res. Uh, okay okay so um i remember someone said that to me uh, oh i think it was um sterling 
because he got the whole download at Cameron Trading Post, and then he heard about Navajo Point and all of that. Right. Uh, okay. Right. Sterling knew. Yeah. Anybody yeah. have some pictures of Rock Art Canyon? To, to, Rock to Art Ranch. Up? Yeah. Or Rock Art Ranch. Sorry. Yeah. One of you guys well, we, have pictures. We can I start with. Um, I've got a bunch, but I, I'm sure you guys do. So I'll be back up since I'm recording. Okay. Um, here we go. The first one here is Chevlon Canyon. And this yeah. is where the the road, the bridge crosses the canyon, as you can see. And this is where we had a flat tire. <laughs> <laughs> and it's that those rocks, uh, you can kind of see how they're rounded and interesting looking there along the canyon. They sort of show up in the desert as you're driving along. The desert's kind of flat and you know, scrub, scrub like and boring. And then this yeah. this interesting rock formation starts to appear poking out of the desert. And then and then you realize that it's part of a canyon. It's really interesting. Right. And look and at look at this look at the strata here. Yeah. This would be wind blown. Wind blown. Hmm. Yeah. And so you've got a truncation surface right here that's been smoothed right. off. And then another layer is dumped on top of it. So these were dunes. Shifting yes. dunes, yeah. Wow. These were dunes. Wow. Uh, there's a lot of wind erosion there too. With oh all yeah. The different back and forth. Yep. Yep. Yeah, that's a really amazing canyon. I like going down to that place. Um, but I don't know if you guys noticed or not. There's a little bit of a heavy energy down there. I I think it's from ancestral energy i know i might be getting a little fluffy here but uh, well you never know you might not be yeah there's there's I, i've taken other people down there and like i said even though we made that real simple prayer it seems like it's important to going into that space there's there's been some heavy energies after coming out of that place happened mm -hmm. to different people mm -hmm. well i thought it was I thought it was very respectful. You know, it was a short little ceremony acknowledging that we're going down into a very special place to the ancestors of the people of the land. And we went down in there. We all had a great time and nothing bad happened. And it was, yeah, it was intense, but I didn't feel like it was uh, negative for sure. So, right. Yeah, it's definitely intense for sure. Yeah. I mean, all of those uh, different uh, sort of beings there with antennas and yep. three fingers on their hands kind of <laughs> yeah. thing yeah we yeah, might fair. mention we're not on the ranch here yet not, not yet but we're not in the area where the um where the petroglyphs are found but the petroglyphs are actually down in the canyon which right. Evlon canyon runs across the property uh the ranch property um, which we decided was about 60 or 80 feet deep and uh the ranch owner uh said said that canyon went about 10 miles so i haven't looked at it specifically yet on the, some of the satellite images, but yeah, it kind of snakes its way around through the, through the desert. Otherwise, you know, you wouldn't know it's there. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Nope. You can't see it from a distance. It's, no. it's hidden. Right. And I, and I wonder about the location there with all the petroglyphs because, you know, you've got this canyon, it's really long and what makes that part where all those petroglyphs are so different than all the other parts of the canyon. You know what I mean? Uh, Robert, you told us you had hiked up further and didn't really find very many, but just in this one, what it, what was it, like 200 yards of distance in the canyon or something is just loaded all yep. over these reliefs. So it's interesting why they chose that spot and what was, why was that important? Brantley was telling us he thought it was because it has the best access right there, even though he's installed those stairs. So that was his explanation for it. I really haven't looked around and thought about it too mm. much. It's a pass. In other but, words, you can get yeah, to the and, back and it was also on the migration pass. So these guys are going back and forth to yes. different Pueblo locations. And this might not have been a regular settlement, but like an Airbnb where you stop over. Yeah. And you can get down and get water. Place. Yeah. And wow. the water's there. So water's mm. important, of course. That's well, one amazing. thing too is notice the the dark desert varnish on the rocks here. 
And yeah. there was a lot of that down in the area where the petroglyphs are. So, and that's where they—that's typically where they do the artwork because it, uh -huh. it's the light on dark. Uh, right. Now, why is there varnish on those parts and not on the rest of it? Is it a different? Um. Well, I'm sure it's probably the exposure. It has okay. to do with the exposure. I'm not an expert on desert varnish. Okay. Um, well, and the dates good. on those go back. Uh, up to up to nine thousand years, right? So we were talking at the crater how that area was was probably forested at that point, or not long before that. Is that right? So yes, chances are it was uh, a lot more moist and uh, water, but it would have been flowing more regularly through the canyon. But what I walked through out on the side of the little pavilion there that was overhanging, there's a spillway. So I was thinking there was a little river on the top that flowed in right there too. So that would have been an attraction to have that water up on the top side flowing into the canyon. It would have probably been a little waterfall even right there. Oh yeah. Yeah. Hmm. Well, you can note here now. Here we are on the on the ranch, and we're looking down into the Chevlon Canyon. And notice how much desert varnish there is on the rock face. Right. Plus, notice how the rock faces seem to be kind of sheared off and and much more flat. Right, yeah. and then what you're seeing back here. Yes. Yeah, I I always assumed with no evidence <laughs> that uh, those varnished areas were protected from water running down the surface. Like they may get splattered with rain and stuff, but for mm -hmm. for the most part, water doesn't run where you see that desert varnish. Otherwise, it would erode it away. So they're sort of protected from a downflow. That's what I always thought. Mm -hmm. The places you find are tilted in su in such a way where water doesn't really run down them. You see some places in Canyon de Chez and and the darker places are exactly where the water runs down. So I don't know how that, you know, colorization on those rocks is different than the varnish, but but you can see that they would build some of their structures way down at the bottom right where water was draining over the top because there were marks on the on hmm. the sides of the, the canyon wall. Hmm. Petroglyphs wouldn't last very long, though, if the water was running down it. Correct. Uh, that's an interesting thing because the uh, the game and wildlife was going to dam up Chevlon, and if it weren't for Brantley uh, preserving this, they were going to all those petroglyphs would have been covered in water by now. Oh my gosh! Oh, Great. Wow. And Brantley had a big fight to make that happen and turn it into a heritage site. And that's why we can go down and check out those glyphs today. Wow. Good man, Brantley. Yeah. Good yeah. Man. Yeah, he seemed like quite a guy. Quite an old gentleman cowboy. Yeah, yeah. gentleman cowboy for sure. Yeah. yeah, so let's see. Let's get to some of the petroglyphs here. Are you still seeing my screen? Oh, yeah. yeah. Okay. Let's get some of the good ones here. Uh, in some cases, that varnish is thick. I mean, you can see it's yeah, uh, it's very thick. Well, these these aren't showing up too good, but you can kind of see relics of the figures right here. A star down here. There's something here, but um, yeah, that's... I can see some animal figures down there. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, down yeah. here. There's on the bottom. Let me see. Let me move yep. you to... Oh yeah, there's there there are some down there. Let's see if we can. Yep, and there's that guy over there, the shaman stance or whatever it's called, over to the right. That's a good one. Yeah, there were literally hundreds of them, if not if not a thousand or more. Is did you say there was some kind of count, Robert? Uh, there was more than three thousand petroglyphs, and the oldest ones are dated back ninety five hundred years. So wow. 7,500, <laughs> that's a long time ago. Yeah. yeah, BC. Yeah. There's always seems to be like constellations, stars, things in the sky. Um, there's a three-fingered yeah. people. They always have just three fingers. That's a little odd. The UFO people would probably say that's confirmation of ETs. I don't know. But uh, the the one that stands out the most to me is that one where the woman's giving birth and she has the Hopi yes. uh, curls, uh, hair yes. braids on both sides. Right. 
Um, that's, yeah, that's probably that's about the weird. largest one too. It's one of the largest it's ones. Very large, for sure. yeah. Very prominent. Yeah. Yeah, we'll get. I have a pretty good shot. This of that. guy. What is that? <laughs> this guy. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Is he talking shit? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> that is a strange one for sure. Uh, I don't think I saw that one. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. What's that? Who is that guy? I, I mean, it's very bizarre. And there's like a robotic guy who's very square. You yeah. know, it looks like a, okay, that's a, some kind of robot from a sci fi movie there's a lot of sci-fi I mean, stuff on the on the walls that's for sure that one looks like it dates Definitely. to about 2019 <laughs> 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 somebody yeah. defied the no chipping rules the no of, chipping rules couple of guys there yep but yeah plenty of plenty of uh insectoid looking things and animals or deer standing on two legs so uh, you know with huge antler that kind of doubles as antenna looking branching off in many directions yeah all kinds of strange stuff yes and and not strange same that you see in many other places you know consistent was was yeah quite a few other places hit the next one a lot of serpentine symbolism Oh, hey, that's my hand. I see my bracelet that's now. That's your, uh, yeah. Uh-huh. Yeah, that's that's your hand, Robert. We <laughs> thought, we decided beforehand that we were going to feature your hand. <laughs> uh, the, you know, the, the stream, that picture reminds me of uh, one of the pilots over here in Sedona saw one of those on the wall at V bar V and he said it, it looked like Oak Creek Canyon to him that he had flown up and down Oak Creek Canyon many times. Uh-huh. So that, that could be a stream or symbol uh-huh. of water or a meander. Uh, yeah. An entrenched meander. Oh, uh, there we go. There's, there's one of these weird looking guys. And that's, yeah. Uh, that's, yeah, that one, those were weird. Russ. He, he had horns. Yeah. Yeah. And then. Here's another meandering serpent like feature. I think they might be, you know, since they know their own symbology and it's their own language, they're passing on messages to different travelers and it uh-huh. seems like they're keeping track of the skies as well as the, the terrain. And that would be important information, you know, if you're out in the middle of nowhere. Yeah. Uh, We could we could spend two and more hours going through all these. What uh, what else we got? You guys saw the uh, pyramid, the the like pyramid shape petroglyph. Oh yeah, yeah. I got some good pictures of that yeah. one. That was really interesting too. I took Robert Buval and Robert Shock down there, and uh, Robert Shock was really interested in. Uh, the, the guy that stands yeah. like this has the plasma a, forms. Above. Yeah, exactly. Wow. Right. Yeah. So he found some of those down there. Yep. I took some pictures of those yep. as well. It, it's, it's got it all down there. Really great place. And we had a, afterwards we came up and watched the sunset and then had a campfire. Yep. Yep. Hung out, had burgers. <laughs> it was, that was, it was great. That was the first campfire we've ever had out there. So that was really cool that we got it was. to do that. It was really cool. Did some stargazing. Was excellent under the stars. That's right. Yeah. And what's Argue this here? Pyramids. Though it's a bit dangerous walking around, just ask Randall. Yeah. <laughs> That's right. Yuko took the same fall, I guess. Yuko got her legs scra- scraped up at the same place. Oh, oh really? Yeah. Yeah. You think there's stairs there and there's not. There's right. stairs to drop <laughs> and there's off. not. That's right. <laughs> You think it's about an eight foot step and it's about a 30 inch step. 
I mean, an eight inch, eight inch step, and it's yeah. that it's 30. So it can be a little discombobulating. <laughs> I don't well, know. I thought those are like counting something or maybe stars or if you ever, I mean, look, you can count them. <laughs> 10, 11. Well, I think I'm getting 24. It's an interesting number. There you go. One month. <laughs> Moons. I don't know. No, hours, not, not quite long enough. Yeah. yeah. Hours of the days. Yeah. And it has that line in the center over those four or five. Yeah. And what is this? What is this guy, Robert? That's... I think it's probably elk because it's so big. Uh -huh. uh, yeah. And antlers. But, yeah. It looks like elk to me at first glance. They have some deer sometimes, but elk is really prominent up there in Flagstaff in that area. Uh -huh. Another. So we didn't we didn't talk about this ahead of time, Robert. We we talked when we got back from the trip though. We're we're looking at compiling a lot of our videos and images and doing some narrations and actually offering a trip review to people. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, that's a good so, idea. So that's something we want to keep working on and make that available. Uh, definitely a lot of people are not in the mindset to go out on the road and be in a vehicle with half a dozen people and uh, <laughs> do that kind of thing. So yeah, we want to, we want to put something together and uh, be able to offer a kind of a, a virtual tour, right? Right. Yeah. Yeah. I think that's an excellent plan. Yeah. There's the guys. It, it reminds me of uh, like the member the, uh, the serial tricks are for kids. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> With the floppy uh, rabbit, floppy yeah, rabbit. yeah. But maybe they're the animals. You know, yeah. Those are those. Can you speak freely here? Sure. I don't know. It looks like some beans you might see in in uh, some sort of psychedelic experience. Uh, yeah, that's, that's what. And a lot of the medicine people will have you know, been ingesting and taking in uh, different, like, for example, peyote is up here in the Southwest. Mm -hmm. And then they go on a vision journey and then, you know, they come back and tell the story of what they saw on the other side. So this kind of reminds me of that as well. Uh, possibility. And I asked Brantley if it has anything to do with the Datura there. You guys saw the Datura? Yeah, you the pointed big, it out to white, us. Yeah, yeah, the big white flowers. Right. I, I said to Bradley, uh, "Do you think they were using that and then doing this?" And he goes, "Well, I don't know, Robert, <laughs> but uh, that stuff will sure make you crazy." <laughs> <laughs> well, as I yeah. said, you know, some of the some of the ones that look like standing up elk and deer it's like okay well they were doing some ayahuasca or peyote maybe in this case and they you know had a vision with the or talk with the animal world you know they they were yep. standing up and talking to them like a human well yeah, yeah look, look at this right here look who's what's who's look at this guy yeah with the with the and, animals yeah with the animals right yeah he looks like he's kind of in the other world yeah, yeah. Don't, don't show i would think so <laughs> Yeah. So, but it's amazing that these these images could last for so long. Like, yeah, this like there's the star there, and mm -hmm. uh, sometimes it looks like they're showing a binary system. Um, sometimes it looks like they're showing a whole like this looks like a satellite down here in the left hand corner behind the deer. See how the deer doesn't have any horns and it's a little bit smaller. This one here? Yeah. Okay. Uh -huh. And behind it is like this, what could look like a satellite, I've thought many times. This uh, thing right here. Yeah, it's something I might see in Star Wars. Uh-huh. And then what's this? 
I don't know, maybe that's the sun or binary system when you have the star, big star yeah. over here. And, and because, or, yeah, you've got this and then you've got the star up here. Mm -hmm. And, and the arrows you, pointing. Uh, yeah, there well, were, if it's interesting, there were arrows pointing at stuff <laughs> in various places. It was weird. You're like <laughs> looking at all these glyphs and there's an arrow like over here. <laughs> <laughs> like, what? It didn't go out of fashion. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, this is this is a hex wrench, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, they got to fix that star. That's yeah, they fix that satellite. Yeah. <laughs> and look here. Here's another meandering feature, serpent-like. Yeah. You know, yeah. a lot of it is so obscured. You can you imagine what this would have looked like a few thousand years ago? Wow. Yeah. Uh, you know, really, really at one mean. at yeah. Um, and who's that guy right next to the right of your arrow? It looked like, you know, Hellboy. This here? Uh, no, up above your arrow now. You were just, keep going. Keep here? Going. There, oh, yeah. 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 Oh. You know, he's got the big arms, but it could be like. <laughs> yeah, he's got the um, hammerhead. Yeah. 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 Right, right. Yeah. And then there's a big fi figure off to the left who's very dark. I think I was wondering if the darker ones are the very, are the very old ones. Where are you seeing that? There's oh, over here, guy right no, there. Look at yeah. that. And yeah, there's another another one look at there. this. Yeah. Yeah. So those right. figures are dark, and I was they've wondering already, if uh, they've I, already got a patina. They've got a patina on them again. So or varnish. I, or varnish, or whatever you want to call it. So wow. I think that those might be older, the older right. original right. images. Right. And he could definitely be the shamanic guy, you know, because they often take the what is it when they make a human and an animal? I can't remember that term. Uh, right. Skinwalker? You talking about no, skinwalker? Not, no, not the skinwalker. Um, oh, a therianthrope. Yes. You yeah. Got it. The therianthropes. Yeah. Um, so the, the shaman would actually uh, often, well, they don't like to be called shaman. So medicine person uh, would, would be featured as one of those uh, yeah. type creatures. This guy looks like he's got a bow and arrow. Yeah. Right here, yeah. He's carrying a Tommy gun. <laughs> well, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Plasma gun. <laughs> you know, Marvel, I was told by a Hopi elder that Marvel, and he even has the uh, Marvel comic books, Marvel came to Hopi to hear about the Kachina stories, but they made a promise to the Hopi that they wouldn't put the Kachinas in a bad light, and they broke their word. Oh. And the Hobie got really upset about it and demanded that they retract it all. And they did to their credit. Ah. Uh, oh. But so can you imagine where a lot of our sci-fi movies are coming from these old cultures that we don't know about anymore. Uh, and they're just bringing those stories forward and, and putting the mythologies out. Imagine if we could get more of the mythological stories brought forward. Oh, yes. yeah. And what? Look at this guy here. I mean, <laughs> it, it coming up from his head yeah. here. It almost looks you know you can't see over here. It's obscured, but it almost looks like antenna or something. Right. Sure does. Yeah, that's why I keep thinking the ant people. Yeah, they look like ant people. That's a good one. Yeah. So what do we do next? So we we camped out that night. The next day we got up and we tried to visit some overlooks that were closed. Yeah, I was gonna say this we is ended all up this is all day one. Yeah, yeah. we got four There's days. The pyramid. Left. We ended up driving through Monument Valley, which was beautiful. And then at the end of the day, we made it to the goosenecks, right? Isn't that uh, I think so, yeah. Right. Out of Mexican hat just over the Utah border and then a little farther way up to Great Goosenecks. Yeah. So sundown there. Yeah, we got there at sundown. Mm -hmm. and uh, stayed the night there. Okay, there's the big, there's the big, the woman giving birth. Yeah, because oh. the, the thing that makes this different is she's got those buns on either side, and that's supposed to represent she's married or virginity. So it's kind of like the virgin mother in a way. Yeah, well, it's a, it is. It's a virgin uh -huh. birth, yeah. The virgin birth. I mean, if, if if you're right, I mean, you said that 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 the hairstyle here indicates a young girl or a virgin. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. And or uh, not married, not taken, not yeah. taken. Okay. Well, then there we go. 
But that story of the Virgin Mother is all over the planet as well. And to yep. see it pop up in this old culture, which like, how are they connected? But I always have this theory that the ancient cultures were more connected than we think. I don't know yes. how to prove that, but that's right. what I think. It's, it seems like it. Well, I think that's a, a, a very interesting and plausible idea personally. Now, what I've wondered about is what are these forms? I thought they they look like the chakras. Yeah, that's what I thought too, yeah. That did occur to me, yeah. The other thing is the belt or the waistline is very similar to some of those other uh, bands Mm -hmm. that we were looking at. Mm -hmm. Um, Yeah. hmm. So maybe that's a clue. And some of those, not those circular forms in the middle there, they're actually dug in pretty deep. Yes, uh-huh. they actually po- they actually dug those out to where they're almost uh, crater like. That's why I would be interested to see if that lines up with any star formation, like yeah. uh, bright star formations. We're getting into a little geometry here. Yep. Yeah, that, that also seems like some sort of calendar or counting. When I see them lined up like that, why are they parallel? Why are they yeah. symmetrical? Is that is that a lizard guy holding a saw down there? This guy? <laughs> yeah. He's holding one of those long right. logging saws. <laughs> oh, oh yeah. it's a it's a cross cut <laughs> saw. Right. <laughs> sure. <laughs> oh man. Sheesh. Yep. Yeah. That Wide dude's like a clawed hand and this. Yeah, he definitely had some detour. Uh, you can tell. <laughs> yeah. His hand just went... <laughs> and his feet. Yeah. But what's with the webbed-footed, breasted, hammerhead shark thing up there? Okay, yeah. You want to you yeah. hear, yeah. hear a weird story I heard from another Zooner, a Zooner, Zuni elder. <laughs> um, he yeah, told sure. me that long, long ago, tens of thousands of years ago, that they were really small, the Zuni, and that they had webbed feet, and that wow. they came out of the water. And I, I haven't tried to prove any of that. Uh, wow. Just uh-huh. one of the stories I heard along the way. Wow. And you see the ghost standing next to him? It's yeah, very this. The pockmark. Yeah. yeah. Look at that. Yep. Also looks like it's got the same kind of head, or maybe those are the buns or something. I don't know. It's very interesting. Like they just didn't finish that one. That's like your shadow self there. Yeah, they got started and didn't didn't finish it because we were looking at this and the or Kyle was doing experiments on pieces that were on the ground and he figured out that you can't really scrape that stuff off there. You kind of have to poke at it. You have to you have to impact it with another rock to get that varnish to pop off there. Uh huh. So most of these were probably made using by that, hammering by hammering it. Yeah, that one definitely looks like a. I don't know. A, it's a system. The weird thing is, how do they get that sort of oval, half spherical shape? That seems like an art in itself. That yeah. doesn't seem. Uh, so they took some meticulous time. Yes, absolutely. Well, well, there's a really good plasma form up there to the left. Form, yeah. yeah. Here. That's right. like the kind of stuff that, yes, that, uh, I think exactly. Robert Shock would probably be like, Oh, yeah, yeah, that yeah. right there. And all that's yeah. missing are the two circles to either side in the middle. Mm-hmm. And there's Michael Jordan in the center. Yep, it's about to, yep, here, yep. yep. he's about yeah. to dunk on somebody. Yeah, yeah. Uh-huh. yep, <laughs> he's playing sacrifice ball, <laughs> but, but they did have the ball court up. That's what we would have seen at Wapaki. That's the most, the right. furthest northern, most, uh, furthest, most northern ball court. Uh, is that Wapaki? Oh, and if you if you guys ever get a chance that, to go to Hopi, that one there is Randall on the left. It's, <laughs> yeah, it's a little, uh, yeah, it's a little, um, it's a little obscured. Yeah, but yeah. Well, when you guys, were, I wandered down by myself there, and so I just did a quick self portrait. <laughs> you guys didn't see that. I. <laughs> Sorry, Robert. What were you saying? If we do what? Uh, oh, I I think I lost my thought. Oh well, Wupaki, oh, man, it'll I'm come sorry. back. Yeah. It'll come back. Or the I ball, interrupted the ball you for a bad oh, joke. The ball court was is the the ball court in Wupaki is the further furthest most northern ball court. So the Aztecs were definitely up here, and 
that uh, one petroglyph that looked like uh jordan yeah yeah a ball player could oh, be yeah. could be a ball court yeah wow that's and that's cool. and that's right next to the blowhole that's there right it's yeah, really big, close to each other yeah it's like they had a little area to rest and get some breeze cool themselves off during the game well, it was good that we went ahead and spent time in the Valley of the Gods because uh, Sterling said they had shut down Wapaki as well. Wow. So right. I don't know. Something popped up that weekend, and I guess we were just kind of taken care of to spend more time where we were. Yep. Uh-huh. So we drove through Monument Valley. We stopped at El Capitan. Yes, Talked we about did that, that. for a little while. Yeah, we couldn't go into monument valley i guess but we drove past it i guess is that the right way to say it uh yeah i guess there's an actual before park we move on can... to monument valley i wanted to show one one more thing here oh okay one of the things that we noticed okay well let's see here's thought we'd take a look at at uh there we go there's Brantley. Oh yeah, and uh, giving us giving us the background, sort of an archetypal cowboy, I would call him. Yeah, definitely. But great guy. Really enjoyed meeting him and having him come out and give us the little lowdown on the whole situation there. And did you say the ranch is like five thousand acres? Yeah, yeah. I think he me. I think he still leases some of it from from the the government but then uh they have a chunk of their own as well it's really huge. Uh-huh. I think at least 2000 is their own. Okay, I see. He was 11 when they moved there and that was in 1948. Oh, okay. Wow. 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 Yeah, and he told us of some other really interesting sites that were nearby that, that he could take us to if we had the time. Yeah. So we need to go um, back. So definitely need to go back to that place and yeah. go look at some of the other interesting things around. Yeah, mm -hmm. I think so. I was trying to find, you know, we found that there was a lot of rock erosion, potholes and things in right. the canyon floor. And... uh Here's people might recognize this. Let me um, pull this up. This was taken with my cell phone, so it, it, it's not as good. My my battery died in my main camera when I was down there. Um, but no, I was just going to say briefly while you're looking for that. Still, as far as the you know the heavy energy down in there, you know, anytime you've got stagnant water <laughs> and it's not flowing through there, you know, you do kind of get some of those stuck energies that may people may perceive that way mm -hmm. yep yeah so here we have going at it. imbrication remember the term kyle yeah russ just gave it away imbrication <laughs> sorry yeah there it is look at that yep so is that indication of large water flows through there yes sir it would from, seem like it and they are pointed downstream from the left yeah. to the right yes yeah. yep I that I might mention is Darren. No. <laughs> hey, this is a good point. You, uh, When we were looking at the strand lines, or the, not strand lines, the strata lines in the, in the sandstone, they do the opposite. They form, the, they're windblown, but they angle the other way. See, the imbrication, I just thought this was just cool. Imbrication lays down angled towards downstream, Whereas the windblown strata angle towards, they angle upward toward the direction of the oncoming wind. Well, it has to do with the size, the granularity. Right. It has to do with the size. Like if you've got either windblown or water transported, you basically have the, the formation of dunes. And it's the migrating dunes that leave that bedding, the, the tilted right. bedding. And this is, would be a direct deposit by water. In other words, these boulders are probably here already, and the water basically moves them and, and sort of adjusts them like this. Yeah. So if I'm we were to be zoom in, 
Sorry, Kyle. And say well, that that just slid off the top. That was part of that rock, and they they either worked on that or broke it, and that slid off top. That was not moved there. Well, I wouldn't think that it fell off the top and ended up imbricate like that. I mean, it maybe it fell off. Of that, it was part of that rock that was sitting there. If you look at the, there were there were three other divisions that were that same thickness. So, oh, you mean it? You mean it split? like that is that what you're saying right, okay, right yeah right i it mean came it came off the wall oh i'm certainly yeah thinking it could have come off the wall absolutely but if it fell randomly would it fall in that imbricate pattern and that's what i'm suggesting it is imbricate now whether it came that way randomly the rock falling off the wall which of course would not be indicative indicative of anything yeah, so, i'm just but, saying i'm but, saying somebody pulled the top layer off and slid it off purposely <laughs> okay well all right well who would have done that and why would they have done that well because look at it it's a nice little tent area it's a sh it's a little shelter ah the three-fingered hammerhead giants did that randall <laughs> i don't know <laughs> i said i was gonna be contrarian <laughs> yeah well, you, took we, the pic, you took the picture away. You know, you don't see it now. <laughs> should we uh, look at Monument Valley or take a break? We're yeah, we're, in... we're about up on break time here. Yeah. If we're oh. changing locations, you ready to shift locations there, Randall? Yeah, I got my Monument Valley's right here. All right. Ready to go. Break it. All right, let's take a break. All right, welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to Cosmographia, the Randall Carlson podcast. And we've been joined by Robert, and we um, just got back from this fantastic trip we went on, so we're covering some of that, obviously. Uh, before we get back into that storyline, I wanted to mention uh, CBDfromthegods.com. Go to the website, check out their products. If you order something, put in the promo code RCSHIPSFREE, and they'll know you came from the Cosmographia audience that will help us out. Thanks to everybody who has done that. And thanks to all of you who contribute to the show in whatever manner you do. Brad? We also got notified today that we've got a new batch of T-shirts, uh, the black ones, as you see the Snake Bros wearing. And uh, Mike and I have been wearing the last couple episodes. Uh, there are now all white versions and in uh, the unisex. And uh, ladies white, also a smaller, uh, shorter sleeve version that are going to be available soon too. So definitely by the time this, uh, this episode is posted, we'll have a little more variety in the offerings for the t-shirts. And we've had uh, a couple people send in already. Randall asked for it, take your picture, send it in to us. Uh, we've received some, so thanks for those. Keep them coming. Oh, well, okay. Well, I guess we'll save that for next, next show. What well, right. showing all the pictures. Yeah. 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 yeah we'll wait till we got a couple more. Yep. Um, yeah, so uh, then we proceeded on. Like you said, we couldn't get into Monument Valley, but we certainly drove by it. But on the way up, kind of what you're heading, um, oh, heading north there on 89. And let's see, then it goes over to what, let me see, the route we took was, um, yeah, 89 to 160. 89 out of, out of, um, by Flagstaff, out of Flagstaff. Then we cut over on, no, this is on the way back. I'm sorry. Let's yeah, go we back. Went one, we went 160 up and then, uh, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, because we went from, uh, Meteor Crater. Our next stop was going to be Canyon to Shea. So we went up 191 by Chinley and then we cut east, um, by Canyon del Muerto. And that's where we were going to try to get some good shots of overlook shots, but, um, no, everything was gated off. So we took a really interesting drive yep. up 91 then to Mexican hat, um, and saw really some incredible landscapes. And I think Brad, you and I had already, we've done that route before, I believe. Um, yeah, one time we got got a little bit farther east toward the Chuska Mountains before we went north instead of going up the main road from Chinle. Yeah, we went up along 
Canyon del Muerto there. Yeah. And uh, yeah, add, add a little more scenery because the other, the other way is pretty, pretty flat going through the, the Chinle wash. Uh, so yeah, I think everybody enjoyed seeing some of that uh, naked geology up there. Yeah. So then let, let's backtrack. We were coming up north up 163 because we went by El Capitan or Agathla. Correct. Right. So what, what, what did we do? We took 191 to 160 at Mexican water and. Oh, or Robert right. probably knows the tr the route. Yeah. Chinley, when we went out, um, we went that backside, right? Yeah. I don't, I don't right. know what road that was, but we went the backside and came back around. Yeah, so, so we didn't we go went, all the way up 191. Yeah, we right. kind of added Right. Right. Okay. So it. we yes, we took that. We we diverted to the west. Right. Mm -hmm. And, no, and we then that east. took us back we to 160. Us, we went east east first and then north somehow. <laughs> yeah, it would, <laughs> it would probably be a good idea if we could remember the ride. <laughs> we drove a long way and passed some really <laughs> awesome <laughs> stuff. Well, I'm trying to think because we came. <laughs> We came from the, the south up 163, where we where you right. pass El Capitan, which we're going to look at right now, because that's kind of when you get to El Capitan or Agafla, it's also called, which is a diatreme, a volcanic neck. So um, I got some images of that here. Oh, uh, Brad's got his maps out. He's going to figure it out, guys. Okay. <laughs> He's putting his glasses on. Both we know glasses. that, yeah, okay, so we're getting serious on both now. sets of glasses, yeah. Oh, I have both monocles at the same time. <laughs> <laughs> He's got a monocle on each eye. He's going to figure this out. <laughs> okay, so we'll do a share. While Brad's figuring that out, we'll do a share screen. So you can now see here uh, El Capitan in the distance. It's about 1,500 feet up off the the desert floor. And... Notice here we've got actually another volcanic neck. It's not nearly the height of El Capitan. And then we have another one you'll notice right here in between. They almost form a line, which is interesting because it might indicate that there's a large fracture in the earth um, that, these, uh, that these volcanic necks are extruding up through. But these are basalts. So most of this landscape around here is going to be sandstone with some limestones, but these are, which are, you know, obviously sedimentary rocks, but these are basalt. These are lava rocks that have pushed their way up through the, the crust of the earth. And um, let's go. Let's see here. Oh, yeah, here we are. We've pulled over to the side of the road so we could talk about El Capitan in the distance, and I'm talking here about... Um, basically the formation of a volcanic neck. And the thing is that let's speed, speed for God. I didn't. Okay. Here, um, an impressive group. So oh, yeah. we, we see band. <laughs> El Capitan by, over see. Brad here <laughs> and, and over here, look at here, here's the, uh, owl rock. Now this is interesting because you've got such a, a, a narrow pedestal rock that you've got to wonder how long it's been there. Um, because this, this is not completely a, a, a seismically inert region here. So, you know, any significant earthquake is going to topple something like uh, this right here. Um, but here's the thing that people need to realize this thing that's 1500 feet tall. Let's, uh, there we go. The top of this, you understand that this is this is a like think of a giant hole in the ground, and the lava is pushing its way up through this hole, and all of this was surrounded by sedimentary rock, which is now gone. You can kind of, if you look down here, you'll see the the little houses down here that'll give you a sense of the scale. Yeah, so fifteen hundred feet high. So what we're seeing here is an indication of the scale of the erosion that has affected the Colorado plateau. And until you've spent time out in this area of the country, and it is a, it's a, the Colorado plateau is a, is a large area of land that has undergone an extraordinary amount of erosion. And the, uh, the early geologists referred to this erosion that they saw in the landscape as the great 
denudation. That is in that the land had become denuded of, in many cases, thousands of feet of sedimentary rock. And in some cases, more than a mile of sedimentary rock has been removed since the uplift of the plateau, which again is just a phenomenal amount of erosion. And here we are going past Monument Valley and this butte, this is a butte, right? Because it's, it's narrower uh, than it is tall. Uh, as soon as it gets wider than it is tall, it becomes a mesa. And at some point, a mesa becomes a tableland. And I've forgotten the exact um, transition between a mesa and a tableland. Oh, okay, um, I thought I thought a butte was basically the same, close to the same width as it is tall. And then after that, after it becomes narrower, it's a pin. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, that's right. more precise. Thank okay. you that for that clarification. Well, I learned uh, it from you. So, yep. There oh. we go. Ah, <laughs> uh, there we go. Now, the the thing about Monument Valley that's cool is again the amount of erosion. Now, this is all sandstone. So, this is showing what was once here and the top of these mesas and these buttes and these pinnacles was at one time the land surface. And at one time, it was not the land surface. It was buried. The land surface was above it, but it eroded down. And at some point, the top layer of these mesas and buttes was the land surface. And so now you've had, what, 800 feet or so, 900 feet of material removed. And see, here's the thing. You can follow strata that's in these layers, say, of this mesa here, and it'll be duplicated across these other outcrops which shows you that it was once continuous. So in the envisioning of how this landscape came to be, to be, the assumption is generally always just, well, you know, over millions of years, a long, slow erosional process has been at work. So that if you were to go back incrementally in time, let's say by thousand year jumps, you know, it's going to be a very slow process. It's going to go back at least you know, six to 10 million years, because that's how far back we have to go to start getting the uplift uh, that was already underway by 10 million years ago, the uplift of the Colorado Plateau. But, you know, there are layers of limestone, the Kabab limestone, which is the rim of Grand Canyon, is a shallow marine deposit. So obviously, when that was being deposited, Colorado Plateau didn't exist as such, because this land here was below sea level but it's been uplifted. And after the uplift, that's when the erosion starts. So my question is, is that really when you get into um, the, the specifics about the erosional processes, even in the textbooks and so on, it's very, it's really vague other than over millions of years, the landscape was shaped. So then that gets us back to the sort of the, the tacit assumption that all of this is taking place, one grain of sand and one drop of water and one, you know, uh, gust of wind at a time. And that's what leads to this. And I think it's fair to question that and, and, and to look at the possibility that there are episodes of accelerated erosion that may do as much erosional work in a very short period of time as otherwise millennia uh, or hundreds of millennia would take to accomplish in the more gradualistic models of uh, geomorphic change. So that's the question in my mind, uh, and a question to which we're going to return, because I think it's a, an important question. Uh, the question, again, how did these specifically these erosional processes occur? And are we um, justified in assuming that they have been so long and slow and incremental that you would never really see any change over, say, for example, a human lifetime? Or are there periods of accelerated erosion that could even be considered catastrophic? The other question that, that to me is raised by looking at this, when you see these very skinny pinnacle rocks uh, that occur over and over again, um, 
that and, and you see them and you can see that the bedding planes go right through them. So it's almost like it's almost like a sun in some cases, it's almost like you've got rocks just stacked on top of other rocks. So the question then becomes is how stable does the landscape have to be for these things not to collapse? Right? So then that raises the question of where, how far back do we have to go to come to some si uh, significant seismic activity that would be capable of toppling these pinnacle rocks like we see here? I don't know the answer to that, but it certainly does seem to me to be a question worth asking. Um, so, yeah, here we are driving by, and it was just too bad that we couldn't go in. Brad and I have been in there before touring around. Um, and of course this is sort of considered to be the stereotypical Western landscape that you always see. Oh, for example, in roadrunner cartoons, right. And of course made famous by John Ford movies. And do we know who John Ford was? John Ford was the, uh, director right. of a lot of Westerns that were filmed in Monument Valley. So a lot of people have, have seen Monument Valley, maybe didn't necessarily know that it was Monument Valley, but, um, but yeah. And of course, um, if there's a lodge there that would be that Brad and I have stayed in before it's called Goulding's Lodge. And there are remnants of the, uh, the infrastructure that had been set up there, um, for movie crews to stay in while they were filming movies. And I mean, we're going back to, I think at least the 1940s, uh, the movie, uh, my darling Clementine, it was about, uh, um, uh, Wyatt Earp and played by Henry Fonda. And I, I think that may have been the first movie. And then it sort of became iconic after that. And I think Ford maybe filled it, filmed another five or six movies, uh, there. So, um, and there's been television commercials there and, and so on, but we did not get in there to see it. We were only able to drive by. We were on our way to Mexican hat. That's right. And then from there, we went to the, to goosenecks for that. That was the end of that day. Mm -hmm. Goosenecks. Yes. Goosenecks is probably one of the preeminent examples of an entrenched meander, or sometimes also called, called an incised meander, mm. um, which again, as the land is being raised up, the river is cutting down. And of course the assumption is, is when you see a meander like that, just like with, um, water gaps, uh, the assumption is, you know, that in a, in a water gap, that, that the land starts buckling up that say there's a river flowing over the land and it's relatively flat or, you know, maybe a shallow gradient, the river is flowing over and then the land begins to buckle up and the river down cuts or erodes its channel pretty much at the same rate that the land is raising up. And that's kind of the same idea with an incised meander is that the, land is raising up the San Juan river is then cutting it down. Um, and we will do a quick view here so people can see what we're talking about as yeah, far after, as goosenecks. After we, after we got home, I definitely got on the maps and looked at that place in this, in the, within the scale of everything else we looked at. And I, I sort of understood better what you were talking about when you were describing that before what was I saying? Well, we were, I was talking about how this is it. Cause you were telling me it was entrenched and I was like, right. And it's not underfit. And then Brad was saying, well, <laughs> it's inside this gigantic erosion, eroded Valley actually. And so I, I, I hadn't grasped that while I was there. So when we got home, I looked at the maps and I saw, yeah, okay. It is, it's enormous and it's entrenched, but it's actually, it is underfit because it's inside of this, much larger, enormous mm -hmm. erosional feature. Well, it is, yeah. Yeah. That passes through Monument Valley, which you can see on the distant horizon. Right. Yeah, look right up here. There, there's Monument Valley in the far distance. There you go, right. Let's see what we got going on here. Here we are at the rim. And there's 
Bradley and Russ and Kyle. And let's see. Yeah, we're there. Should towards have flown the, end of the, the drone. Oh, you're flying the drone there, aren't you? No, I said I should have. It was just a little too windy, more than I was comfortable oh. with. And look, there's Monument Valley in the distance. Um, yeah, it's really impressive. It is. I've got more pictures here that uh, I got to jump over to. Um, let's see here. And you can so, get over the wall and explore down there and get a little bit closer. Uh, Snake Bros and uh, quite a few of the, the group went down there. Several of them so far over the edge that we couldn't see them uh, uncomfortably. <laughs> yeah. Right. And Robert stood out on the most dangerous spot. He was like, I'll go stand over there. We're like, oh, dude, the yeah. rock's like this thick and it's sticking. He's like, I'll do it. I'm like, All right, man. Yeah, man. He did. <laughs> I thought maybe I could surf it down if it came loose. <laughs> that would have been impressive. <laughs> that would have. <laughs> as long as the camera's running, go for it. Okay. Now, this is, I had to take this with my phone because my camera batteries died. So it didn't come out good, but I'm sure I can throw it into Photoshop and fix it up a little bit, but I haven't done that yet. So this is, this is raw, but it'll, it'll, it'll give you the sense of the, the scale here. If I back out. Oh, yeah. Is that help. some of us standing that's down still, there? Yeah, down on that little point platform yeah. there. Yep. Yep. That's yeah. that's us. That's Kyle and uh, Darren and me and uh, yep, Casey. And Casey. Yeah. Yeah. There. And the echo effect in there was amazing. <laughs> yeah. Oh, uh, yeah. Absolutely. Kyle did it a couple times, shouted, and it, his the echo would s sort of recede down this one side and then appear over here and come back out this other side. Yeah. It was amazing sounding. Because as you're looking at this, you see the, the two rivers. Well, they go back and around this. The, yeah. the hill widens out, and the river goes about around it and comes back. up. And so the echo would right. follow the canyon. It <laughs> yeah. was really cool. It was really, really interesting. Well, let's see here. Um, we are looking at... Uh, Okay. And Mexican Hat is the put-out point. They do raft trips through there, you know, multi-night camping oh, trips down the oh, San Juan. I bet that would be amazing. We got to do that. Yeah. That's That's got to be awesome. Okay, then we'll do this. And you can see the map of it. So we yep. are standing right here where it yes. says Gooseneck State Park. That's where we are. So... You can see the how the river, like you're saying, it widens out and then bends around, and makes this hairpin turn and comes back. So yeah, you can see this. This is a, an entrenched meander right here. Let's yeah try and, turning and on the satellite view. One day it's going to cut through that little. I mean, it's already cut that uh, ith, uh, isthmus, isthmus <laughs> way down lower. Yeah. Uh -huh. So eventually yeah. the river will jump across and that that part will probably dry up. Yeah, yeah. and then you'll have an oxbow. Oxbow. An oxbow. Yeah. Yep. And you find that, of course, in rivers all the time that are meandering over, you know, unconsolidated sedimentary plains. Like the lower Mississippi, you can look in places there and there's just hundreds of oxbows hmm. for sure. where cut off where meanders have been cut off. But yeah, it's pretty pretty impressive there isn't it so yeah we were right in see goose yeah we were right here right here there you can see the the vault toilets <laughs> okay <laughs> well that's, that's what it says i have that's no idea says. what a vault toilet is <laughs> well it says campground there i was just gonna say there's you know a dozen camper trailers people hanging out there uh, right right on the edge right on the rim of that thing yep and then yeah. well, that shows mexican hat the little town we stayed so it's accessible and then yeah you're going to get valley of the gods and moki dugway all right in that one yeah it's gorgeous oh my god is it ever yeah moki dugway tell us about uh the moki dugway or or is that not we're not there yet well, I think that that was the end for that night, and we went back to Mexican Hat and stayed at a 
beautiful little uh, inn, mm-hmm. and it was right on the river. Yeah. yeah, right on the river. Really nice place. Uh, and then the next day, we got up and went to Valley of the Gods first, right? That was the next. Oh, step. we did. Yeah, we right. did. Uh, yeah, we hung around the the pool, had a had a uh, late breakfast, and uh, yeah, it was just so comfy, and everybody was having a good time. Yeah, we just uh, hung out there for a while, so we didn't get going till about noon. Yep, off to Valley of the Gods. That's right. Well, let's take a look at at this. Was the um, this was called Mexican Hat Inn, right? Is that right, Robert? Hat Rock Inn. Hat Rock. Oh, this is Hat Rock Inn. And uh, that night, we after Goosenecks, we had a great talk about the moon around the campfire. Remember that? Oh, we did. Yes. For sure. For sure. Limited access for the late night crew around the campfire. <laughs> yeah. So this, you can see here, this is the edge of the uh, facility here. And this is the San Juan River flowing right by down here. And that's, that's what's behind me, the bridge over the San Juan there, just below the the Hat Rock Inn. Are you in this picture somewhere? No. no oh, 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 I see. Yeah, yeah. His right. background. <laughs> yeah, okay. I'm looking. And it, it really, I've I've noticed a lot of rafters and kayakers and stuff. Looks like it'd be a great river for that. So. Well, it was cool because we got there after dark, and I, I hadn't seen it. Mm-hmm. And we hung out, and there was a little deck down below, and you could hear the river in the darkness. Yeah. And so then to wake up the next morning and actually realize, oh, wow, there's there's this canyon wall on the other side, and the river's, you know, I, I just, yeah. it was really neat because we were hanging out there at night, and I knew there was a river down there, but I had no idea what it looked like until mm-hmm. I got up in the morning, and I'm standing there with my coffee like, wow, this is amazingly beautiful. So oh, yeah. it was a yeah. good effect. And I like the palm trees. Having breakfast <laughs> under the palms with the river flowing. Right. Pseudo Very palms. nice. Yeah. Yeah. So there's. Yeah, there's, we may have to base out of there a couple nights. Uh, we rearrange some of the locations and uh, stay right there. Yeah. Such ideal setup on the river, like Russ is saying, and the, yep. uh, the fire circle and the picnic tables down there, and then all yep. the space around the pool. Definitely a good locale to base out of. Oh yeah, abs- it was so, and yeah, so a lot of stuff is accessible within two to four hour drive. Yeah, you know, from from here, and actually, if we were centered here, we could get further up into the canyon lands of Utah. You bet. So here's here's a great shot from uh, yeah. You said we went to the Valley of the Gods, and uh, here's the first shot from there. It's looking at Monument Valley in the distance, and what I love about these landscapes is just the broad, vast vista, the, the, the distant horizons. I don't know. To me, it's just so exhilarating to, to get this feeling of unlimited expansiveness that comes when you're in a place like this, you know, where, where you live here in Georgia, you know, especially, you know, in urban dwellers these days, they don't get this feeling unless they come out. But once a, upon a time and and there are you know, still to this day people whose normal day-to-day existence encompasses landscapes like this whereas urban dwellers tend to you know your 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 vision is oftentimes limited to you know a city block and you never see the sky hardly i mean i know people that i talk to all the time it's like who who have no 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 comprehension of the sky at all because they never see it. They never look at it. We got to change your camera settings to to widescreen. Yeah. Well, this is all. So that, that particular one, we talked about that, uh, that pinnacle out there quite a bit. To me, it looks like a, a Moa, you know, an Easter Island Moai statue kind of looking off into the distance away from you. Yeah, it does. Doesn't it? Yeah. But it yeah. kind of changes as you went around it. That's right. As you drive around it, it changes direction, yeah. looks like other things, and then looks another yeah. like like another Moai looking in a different direction. It's really yeah, interesting. Yeah, but the but the name yeah. of the place is perfect because yeah. all those pinnacles look they're very they look like statues. Statues. They do. Statues. Bus, yes. bus sitting up on a yes. on a pedestal, yeah. yeah. And it, I love the just the 
the thought of, you know, these were the ancient gods turned to stone. That's just right. like, you know, the <laughs> kind of like mythos that would develop around I know, such formations. I know, yeah. You know, you're like, yes, that is cool. Standing well, he, guard in a way over this yes. landscape. Yes. If you get back to that map, the, the satellite that you pulled out of uh, with the goosenecks there, you can point out where it is with the mesa and the, some of those pinnacles on it. Did this work? I, I minimized the other screens. Can you see the map? picture of the group there? We're at, seeing at the, first the group stop. taking a picture of you yeah. taking a picture of them. Everybody is taking a picture of Randall taking a picture of them. <laughs> yeah. I, I'm going to get a picture of the group here, and then everybody pulls their cameras out and starts taking pictures of me. I think yeah, well, uh, Kyle and, and I just sort of walking off. You can tell. <laughs> Yeah, look. Yeah, look at yeah, here's like, Russ. Like, nah, I don't think I'm going to participate in this. <laughs> That's right. I'm leaving. <laughs> There's Randall, been having to be the center of attention again. <laughs> so, Man, look at that. that, that yeah, this is, I, 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 you're not wow. supposed to be looking at these guys. We're supposed to be looking at this up here. Yeah, I'm gonna cut all that out of the front there. Just yeah, crop, crop that picture and it'll be widescreen again. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Just use the top of Brad's head as the line. That's right. Yeah, there we go. It. Yeah. <laughs> well, we'll just t right there. We'll take the camera, the top of the camera there. So you just see this and people will wonder what it is. <laughs> yeah. what those weird things they find on Mars. What is, what is that <laughs> dome thing out there in the desert? Well, let's see where we Okay. Uh, so all of these are Valley of the Gods here. And, and I love Valley of the Gods. You got all kinds of different colorizations going on there. Yeah, I know. That's, what is that uh, UFO <laughs> thing? It, the, yeah. I don't know. It wasn't there when I took the, took the picture. Let's see, that's, yeah, that's the minivan. Yep. Oh, that's on the minivan? That's, yep. <laughs> well, that's one of the, the first antenna. things I did when I had that van. I, I took out that three-foot antenna and put a little stubby on because it got in the way of the GoPro and the windshield. <laughs> there we go. There it is. Hey, how'd you do that? <laughs> Magic. <laughs> He's a master at uh, Photoshop. Insta, Insta Photoshop. But notice what I was talking about, almost looking like the rocks are just stacked. Yeah. Yeah. Like the layering, loosely. Yeah. Like, yeah. I mean, yes. look at this. I mean, so, I mean, you couldn't have had any serious seismic events and not have this thing collapse. Topple right, right on over. Yep. Yeah. I mean, it looks like a hand reaching out of the ground. I know it. So this is a sandstone, and then it gets into shale down here. Mm. Transition in rock types. Yes, look at, I mean, look at how it's kind of framed by the sky. Oh, yeah, it's, it's beautiful. It is. Yeah, that's the, that's the formation we stopped nearby. That's the, and then Brad's got it behind him right there in a drone photo, I think, in his... Mm -hmm. yep. Yeah, we were certainly having Angular. some interesting skies to complement the interesting landscapes. And some of these didn't come out so good. Ah, oh, look at this. Yeah, here we go. Lenticular clouds started forming. Yeah, I remember that. Yeah. Interesting. Lenticular. I wish I had a. Yeah. You can... Well, that's a good one. So this is atop the Moki Dugway. Right. So after we drove through the Valley of the Gods, we started driving up the, what would you, what is this, the, the wall there, the canyon wall? Yeah, that's the canyon wall. Yeah. So we started driving up this winding road so that we could turn around and look back out onto the, onto the eroded area. Uh, yeah. It was really amazing. It is, yeah. So yeah, it's a, you go up to the Cedar Mesa, so that was the top of it. Right. Okay. And then we turned back around. Yeah, so they're down, way yeah. out there. Isn't that the uh, the one I was saying looks like a statue? Yep. Yeah. Yep. So that yep. gives you the scale. Notice there's a couple of them here. Right, yeah. I think that's the one. Yeah. That's an interesting resolution there. It kind of looks cool. Oh, yeah, here. There's some clouds. Yeah, Lintic. Well, yeah, so I was saying yeah. the uh, the fleet had their cloaking devices on that day. That's yep. right. <laughs> exactly. The Vulcans. Well, we were. I mean, <laughs> you know, I mean, I didn't want to really 
spoiled the, you know, I didn't want to make people paranoid, but we were being monitored. <laughs> yeah, clearly. So I, I didn't bring it up that, you know, they were hovering, keeping an eye on us. So yeah, look at that. That's I, yeah, I was pretty impressed by those lenticular clouds. Oh, yeah. The whole sky was the picture here doesn't do it justice. Right. One the of them that day, the lenticular cloud had a weird rainbow effect happening around it too. It was really yeah. interesting looking. Oh, that's Brad. Yeah, and look look at this. Yeah, yeah, that is strange. Yeah, I mean that's a that's a uh, like a serpent of air that's yeah. creating it. The dragon. Yeah. Yeah, the skies that day were very impressive. Yeah, so this is looking out over over the highway here, looking back towards Monument Valley. And if this was a better photo, you could see Monument Valley on the horizon. Uh, but it really does uh, yeah, there, drive home the scale of the erosion. Because yeah, notice a, here, here's a yeah. mesa, right? Right. So the top of this mesa coincides with the top of this mesa that we're on, Cedar Mesa. So all of this intervening material had to be removed. And only there's just, just little remnants, little yeah. islands left. There's the ziggurat. <laughs> yeah, right the ziggurat. It, it, yeah, really, it, it does. It looks like a Mexican pyramid almost. Yeah, it does. The ziggurat. You got to wonder, perhaps uh, natural formations served as the original inspiration. Could be. Yeah, there's the hat. There's the Mexican hat. Yep. So this is where now that here. definitely wouldn't survive any kind of seismic. It sure wouldn't. You wouldn't think so, right? So you'd almost have to say, well, since this formation has been here and the product of erosion, there has not been a seismic uh, action, a seismic event sufficient to topple this, right? And you got to ask, well. I mean, if you had, I mean, when you look at some of like 8.0 uh, or even high seven points, but when you look, I think uh, the Great Alaskan earthquake was about seven point, I mean, 8.2, somewhere like that. And when you look at, at what, and we're going to look, I've picked some pictures and things I've collected together showing the, the damage of the Alaskan earthquake. And it's just phenomenal. And you go, yeah, I mean, how could something like that happen and, and, and leave something like this intact. So clearly there has been no major seismic activity in this landscape since this thing was eroded. Oh yeah, look at this. Is this the one you were talking about? I think that might be it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I don't see the rainbow effect yet. Yeah, there was, there was one that was very well defined and it seemed like it had a really you know, an extra band, the silver lining mm -hmm. was just like, it was just painted on. So we ended up, uh, Moki Dugway. We went up the switch back and I was going to maybe do a quick look here at the pull up a map so you could, people could see. The road. Okay, here we go. Um, yeah, you can't see it from the distance other than there's a slight area where there's an incline. You can pick it out. Otherwise, it just disappears into the edge of that that cliff wall. Yeah, so it, it was a pretty, pretty interesting ascent to go up like this. I mean, you can really begin to see the, the switchbacks here. To get you from the bottom to the of the mesa to the top of the mesa. Yeah, we didn't get out to Muley Point. Muley Point is a really good overlook from the very rim. Yeah, we actually didn't get to a very good overlook from the rim itself. We did, I think, on the last meander. There was an overlook that we we took those photos from. But you can see up here, look at this. You know, when you get out to Muley Point, you're looking right down again. On You see, the cool thing about that is now you're looking down on the goosenecks from a 1,000 feet higher up. Yeah. So you really can get the sense of seeing the whole panorama of, of the gooseneck formation spread out. 
Whereas, you know, where we were was on right on the rim. So we're right down and we can only see a part of it, you know, because we're right down on the level of it. But when you're up on Muley Point on Cedar Macy, you're looking down on it and it really um, is quite a perspective. So future trips, we're going to have to make sure we can get, we get out to Muley Point and look, you can see it right there, right out on this pit, right out on this prominence. Mm-hmm. Remember when we were out there, you, they show that little road going through. There was one solitary guy riding his bike down there, and it was just like, man, he better have some water because he wasn't seeing anybody soon. Right. Okay, so stop share. So, yeah. yeah. Well, thanks, Robert, for um, being the, the spearhead, the, the driving force, the prime mover. Yep behind this little adventure and we're still not to the end of it yet. Nope. Cause then there was, was the next more. day, right? The next day was, uh, archeology. Yeah, archeology up there and drove down to Flagstaff. And then we had some archeology span on day four. Yep. Yeah. We stayed in Flagstaff, right? That yeah, was a Saturday night party, right? Oh, yep. right. Yeah. Right. That's right. So then we finished up through all y'all's parties. You know? <laughs> oh, yeah. You bailed early, didn't you? Yeah. Every time. I was like, I've heard all this before. I've drank all those beers before. <laughs> I, yeah. <laughs> so I just figured you'd be right there, man. Party animal that you are. <laughs> nope. <laughs> nope. Okay. So then we went to um, Montezuma's, Montezuma's Castle. Castle. Right, too. Uh, which is not which, Montezuma's castle. Which is not Montezuma's <laughs> castle. Right. It's not a castle and it never belonged to Montezuma. Yeah. <laughs> right. Correct. That's right. Correct. Yes. Who did it belong to? Uh, you know I think the, it was the Pueblo people. They have a tribe, they say, that lived there. But the Hopi and Zuni, you know, they claim uh, the Pueblo and, and they claim they've been there tens of thousands of years. So. Uh huh. Most of these places that are built, like you see in Canyon de Chez and things, that would be like the descendants or uh, the ancestors before with the Hopi and Zuni, Yakima, you know, the um, uh, Taos, mm -hmm. all the Pueblo people in, in the Southwest, Arizona, New Mexico. I really like this spot down in the Verde Valley. Yeah. It was, um, would have been a nice place to live. Would have been a great place to live for sure. And that probably would have been a kind of a cool place to live in that right there. Mm. Except how would you get up there? Let's look at it a little some closer. Some kind of cultural center there. Yeah, they had their ladders were the typical things, and they would come in from the top of the roof usually. That was another protective measure. From wild animals and other, other yeah, they people. would enter the buildings through the roof, is what you're saying. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, and so yeah, they probably had some kind of ladder system from the valley floor up to the, yeah, up they to the. How uh, how pull the ladders up if there were people coming from below? Yeah, of course they probably had rocks, and I don't know if you've seen some of those agave plants out there with the big spikes coming out they would use the old ones oh, yeah. to throw down as you know and someone there was invaders or attackers so this think, we will mention should mention is all limestone yeah and i think there might be cave caves in that too I think i'm you're not right. sure but I, it looked definitely looked like down below there was a big cave entrance it was kind of mm -hmm. blocked off well look uh, look down here on the right yeah <clears throat> yep Right-hand corner, and you see a lot of, uh, um, you know, eroded holes, which is typical of limestone. Yeah, and some of those are built up with with bricks too. So they were doing construction around those holes. Mm -hmm. uh, just that area you were just pointing to has bricks built up around it. Yeah, look at this. Yep. So you can see some bricks in that hole on the upper left there. Oh, right up here. Right. Yeah. 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 And I wonder, is this original, all of this in here? 
I don't know that some of that stuff is probably because of the mortar looks like the park service did. Yeah. That. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah. Cosmographia shirts. Look at those guys. <laughs> Brand spanking new Cosmo shirts. That's right. That's right. <laughs> Look at these guys proudly modeling their Cosmographia t-shirts. For sale, RandallCarlson.com. And I have a dead it's cat in now. my pocket. <laughs> That's right. What is it? <laughs> Kyle's got a hamster sticking out of his pocket. <laughs> <laughs> I was yeah. going to say, because that's that, that's taken at the well, right? So I was going to say the coolest thing I thought about Montezuma's castle, though, was that that big hawk that was just riding that wind. Oh, yeah. And we could see him straight up, and he was just hovering there. And that, I thought that was totally cool. I got some good video of that. Yeah, that, that was really cool. Yeah. So this is the well? Yeah, this is the well. Okay, yeah. What do we figure? It's about a football field. No, it's it's what half a football field across. Let's see. I'm looking for some scale. It actually is bigger than it looks in the picture here. Yeah, it's it's very big. It is pretty big. I don't remember how. I don't remember seeing three hundred feet. Three hundred feet. Well, let's see. As a football field, I say yeah, it's probably that long or wide. Yeah, I would think so. And again, it's like you said at Rock Art Ranch. You you never see it from a distance. Right, it's yeah. hidden. Yeah. It's so yeah. hidden. That totally. that's what's really strange. You're walking up a hill and you get to the top. Well, you can see the diagram right there. You go up this hill and it's just and then at the top of the hill, this massive hole opens up. But all around yeah. it's sloping down. So from the from the lower parts of the ground, you would never know that there's a giant pool there. I mean, right. if you were walking around the hill and you t- decided not to climb it, right. You would never know. So uh, that's that was it's really interesting. And this diagram shows how the well, how the Montezuma's well actually connects to this whole subterranean system of a uh, hydraulic system that that percolates through this red wall limestone, which is Mississippian in age. It penetrates up through the Supai sandstone, which is Permian in age, into Verde limestone, which is tertiary. So. Interestingly, you had a succession here of limestone, which is shallow sea. You had then the, sh- the sea receded and left either beach sand or desert sand as part of the Supai sandstone. And then the sea came back again and deposited whole other big thick layers of limestone. And so the basalt dike is what prevents the 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 water from continuing in the red wall limestone it forces it up forces it upwards yeah and so an aeolian lacustrine basaltine diking <laughs> something <laughs> that's right um, salutrian something <laughs> and now notice interesting here between 10,000 and 13,000 years ago yes. precipitation atop the mogion rim began percolating down through hundreds of yards of rock, basalt flows, Coconino sandstone, Supai group, Hermit Shale, and others until it reached the relatively permeable red wall limestone. Once there, it trickled slowly toward Montezuma Well. So, hmm. yeah, here the water reaches an underground dike, which is this, a volcanic basalt that forces it back to the surface after its 10 millennium journey. Yeah, well, here we go. Water has long played a role in building up and breaking down this land. The rock beneath your feet shows ripples of travertine, a type of limestone deposited when groundwater laden with calcium and carbon dioxide flowed over these stones. Um, so, but 13,000, so what it's saying then here is that about 13,000 years ago, the water flow uh, the precipitation on top of the rim obviously increased significantly. Right. Yep. Right and, in the and, period that we've been studying for most of this podcast. Well, yeah. Yeah. Exactly. So that's um, that's interesting to me. But that's that's very common from many sites that we go to. That's that's like the first line. Well, 11,000 years ago, blah, blah, blah. <laughs> yep. It, yep. It's, I wish we had a collection of every one of them because there's a bunch. And we know, and we're studying and telling people why. That's right. Now, that's one of the structures on the inside of the well walls. 
right? Yeah. So there were people living here, apparently. So awesome. Guardians of wow. the well. Mm hmm. Well, yeah. The, the, it's story, not... the, the, the stories uh, from the local indigenous people are that there's a, they believe there's a multi dimensional portal there and um, beings come from other dimensions through that well. Mm. Wow. Well, now that's very interesting. And we'll have to talk about something like that further in another episode. Um, because there's a lot of beliefs like that, uh, as far as underground water springs, uh, the peculiar energy of springs of, of, of dry springs, which is where you have underground water rising under artesian pressure, but it doesn't actually penetrate the surface. Um, yeah, the whole idea that there may actually be a uh, uh, measurable energy field fluctuations associated with the movement of, of underground water. Mm -hmm. So it could very well be that there might be something going on like that here. And uh, mm -hmm. we'll have to discuss that in more detail in a future episode and maybe even get um, somebody like Paul Devereaux on here to talk about his research. Uh, so yeah, this is Montezuma's well. And then, so we're winding down here. We've got, you know, 10 minutes, 15 minutes, maybe we got one more site. We stopped there. Tuzagut. What do you want to tell us about Tuzagut, Robert? Uh, well, Tuzagut seems to be, you know, that top tower seems to be uh, a potential, astronomical observation yeah. tower mm -hmm. and it seems to be lined up with you know you guys were checking out the equinox um also there above jerome is mingus mountains that we're looking at now and this sits below that um there was huge copper reserves up there in jerome that they've taken out of there uh was once the biggest copper mine in the world and Jerome was once the richest city in, in uh, the country. Um, that's, and and there, it was a pretty big uh, living space. There was a lot of people living there. And all that green you see out there, those bushes, were probably farmlands. Yeah, this is all part of the Verde Valley here, you might mention. And yeah. Verde, of course, means what? Green. Green. Yeah. There's yeah, it, just a I, I hint got, of it in that picture. It does yeah. run through that landscape. You can see it. Yeah, I really felt comfortable in this in this particular area right here. I, I liked it. Um, you know, I love the deserts, but I don't know if I'd want to live in the desert. <laughs> you know, I like to hang out in the desert, but I do like a little green. I like plants around, you know. Mm. Mm, plants yes. that aren't trying to stab you with stuff right? <laughs> well those kind of plants yes because <laughs> right. yeah. there are green plants in the desert but usually they're trying to kill you <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it seems. <laughs> yes so this is this is part of Tuzugu. we couldn't get into the main section of it because it was closed off again but um what robert was saying is that this might actually um it's on a ridge and it looks like it has pretty much a north-south, very, very close to a, a, an accurate north-south orientation. That spring equinox spot you guys are pointing Yeah, at. yeah, yeah. I, I don't think notch. I got that. Yeah, there's a notch in the distant mountains that... Looked like it to the northwest. Yeah. Looked like yep. it could have been in a uh, uh, setting position of the sun at uh, yeah. at the equinox. So that tower, that roof there, they've had, um, you know, the local archaeology guy that's the head of the department over there do astronomy talks from the top of this tower. That was one of the first places I got, oh, yeah, it could have been just exactly that. They go up to have talks about the stars from there. Sure. And that, you know, really... Um you know, kind of points to something we've got to talk about in depth, which is the, um, you know, the archaeoastronomy of all of these structures out here. Notice here the stones. You've got, there's sandstone in there. You can see, look, like here's 
a sandstone boulder, and right under it is basalt. So you've yeah. got limestone. Look, this is a piece of limestone right here. Mm -hmm. You can even kind of see the erosion. It's, you got a mixture of, and over here, there's a sandstone boulder. You can see sandstone boulders mixed in. So you're seeing sandstone, limestone, and basalt. Yes, and they also had some um, matates or whatever they call the the boat stones. Uh, they were also made out of the basalt. Uh huh. Probably because yeah. the basalt would be the hardest. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Uh, so I wonder about this place. This this tower surrounded by all these rooms that have no doors, and of course, if it's following in the same design as as some of the pueblo and stuff their their doorways would all been through the roof yeah. yeah so it looks like i mean if it was an astronomical observatory is this a school we're looking at people mm -hmm. come to learn about the the stars and all that kind of stuff staying there teaching that i mean that's cool that would be really cool yeah and i think around montezuma as well too we we started to notice piles of stone they were, oh yeah, they were un. They weren't repaired. Yeah, because that had all been reconstructed in the twenties or thirties, I think it was. Uh -huh. Yeah, but around Montezuma as well, we were noticing. Wow, there's like kind of a pile of stone along the trail here, or over on this side. And then I saw there was a plaque that said, "Yeah, like you look out there and you just see piles of stone with grass growing out of them and everything." Yep. And they showed you that it was actually a seventeen room building. Yeah, wow. Uh, and they showed you the layout, but it wasn't. It hadn't been reconstructed, so it was just rubble. Um. Also yeah. there at Montezuma as well, it was closed there too. We couldn't go down the backside. Remember the Rangers were watching. Right. Oh, uh, yeah. 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 There's uh there's uh old channels. They still have all the hydrology channels for the farming. Oh yeah, that's right. And, and the water comes out the backside, goes into a channel, and it's still functioning today. That's so amazing. Uh all that wow. could be, you know, kind of a farmland. That's what they uh -huh. had it as before. Yeah, that's something that has really fascinated me is is the water management systems developed by these people uh, to a very high level of sophistication. Yeah, and they're supposed to be primitive. <laughs> yeah. Right. Yeah, they had four-story buildings and canals and water you know, irrigation systems. And astronomy. And, and astronomy, yeah. yeah and but they couldn't make pants. <laughs> <laughs> makes them primitive. <laughs> Who um, wants to wear pants when you can wear a loincloth, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Next trip, we're going to have to have a commemorative loincloth day. Oh, <laughs> yeah, there you go. Yeah. <laughs> so, okay, we won't get off on that tangent now. Yeah. But <laughs> Not again. <laughs> but what I love also about is, is the skies. I'm perpetually fascinated with the sky and what, what it's doing. And I just... You know, again, photographs don't do justice to actually, you know, and being up on a site like this, you know, where the site itself is beautiful, looking down over the green and verdant valley, and then you've got this whole incredible panorama in the sky going on between clouds and sun and atmosphere, just like putting on a show. It's like it's putting on a show for us. That's kind of the impression I had there, you know. And that, to that me, was, it's just was something that uh, was a, a strong point about this trip was what was the sky the whole time. And, of course, at the end, you know, we get caught in a snowstorm and a hurricane. And But, um, but yeah. But so, yeah, yeah, I really like this place. Mm -hmm. I, I, I really did like it and, and love the valley there with the greenery. And, uh, yep. And I just want to say, Robert, it was a, it, I think it was a, a great trip, a great, wonderful plan, flawless execution throughout all of the, um, the difficulties with the shutdowns and all that kind of stuff. And um, your team was awesome. I mean, they were just on, on it the whole time. Uh, everybody was kept comfortable and fed and, uh, just all the on the fly decision making and and uh it was just it was fantastic and the whole group everybody was great so it was it was man i can't wait for the next one yeah it was really well done Lots yeah i i will definitely second that a hearty second yep 
Um, Extraordinary experience. Yeah. Thank you, Robert. So yeah, your company is world views media and you, you host and organize conferences and now doing some tours. So yeah, you want to say something briefly about your business out there in Sedona? Oh, just, uh, it's the real pleasure to meet you guys and to be able to hang with you and just to be out there on the land together. Uh, you know, it's one of the coolest things that I can think to do with my time, you know? (laughs) So I, I really, the feelings mutual, you know, it was so much fun. And, uh, Randall is like a wealth of information and a walking encyclopedia and you guys were on it too. So I, I really enjoyed doing these events, gatherings, because I want people to come together and learn about ancient culture to find out that we have more in common than we have in difference. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And that's kind of the point of it for me, besides, like, I just love doing this stuff. It's so cool. Yeah. Well, I I would like to think that this, this was the first collaborative effort of many. Um, mm-hmm. And oh, that yeah. there's and it, there's all kinds of amazing places to go see and amazing groups of people that can come together around these adventures and these investigations of, of the ancient landscapes and the people that inhabited them and so on. Um, Yeah. And and I hope that we can, we can do more and I think we will, we probably will be doing them in the spring and um yeah, I think anything we do in the Southwest now, Robert, will that we do will will be a, a, a joint venture. Yeah. Um, and good. tell them about the conference, the listeners about the conference you're planning in May. Oh, yeah. In May, I have a conference called Earth Origins. It was supposed to come off this past May, but because of the current crisis, we had to postpone it to next year. And we got people like Randall, I think, uh, coming out and um, Freddie Silva and Hugh Newman and Jim Vieira. We've got some ladies in there and we've got some surprises coming up since uh, we're going to have it in a different time with some other speakers. But I haven't confirmed that yet, so I can't make the announcement yet, but it's some pretty cool people. Eric Von Donegan should be still coming out as long as there's no travel bans from Europe. And uh, I just thought it would be cool to bring all these people into one auditorium. It holds about 700 people and it's an amazing landscape. So it's, it's going to be a really good time. Uh, delayed gratification because <laughs> it's <laughs> taken yeah. more than a year to get to it. You know, I was working on it for a year when it was supposed to happen. So it's going to be some set great up, delayed gratification. I set up for the middle of May. Right. Yeah, May and then so if people want to learn 16th. 14 through the 16th. So if people want to learn about that, you got a, a specific website. Yeah, it's World Views with a Z at the end instead of an S. World Views with a Z media dot com. All right. We'll All right. Put that in, the, put... in the links and show notes on the description for everything. People can go right to it. Yep. Right on. Good right stuff. on. Thanks, guys. And thank good. you guys so much. It was so much fun. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah it was it's a like a good man. ride at the roller coaster. I'm ready to go again. <laughs> exactly. Ooh. Yeah, we had we had a blast. It was great. Well, we hit the perfect weather too, and uh, craziness came right after. So that was amazing yeah. how that worked out for us. Well, we called, yeah, us. we called down the storms at the very end. I think, yeah, Robert, did. you should tell a little story about if some of these kind of the little <laughs> things that some of the tangents, they're the psychic tangents, if you will. The psychic tangents? Uh huh. <laughs> uh, I don't know which ones you're referring to. I better re- be careful which ones I actually refer <laughs> oh, to. <laughs> well, I was thinking about the circle at the end. Oh, yeah. Okay. The didgeridoo that was, and the... Uh, that was really amazing. Um, that was pure magic. I can't say anything more about that. You know, we wanted to have a little fluffy moment at the, at the end and hold hands. And there's a real power and energetic in that. And plus, I feel like with all this you know, isolation and social distancing. I think people were hungry to connect. And there's something about like the medicine men and shamans say, when you want to create rain, you get this feeling of gratification and you get this feeling like it's going to rain or something good's going to happen. And so we're standing in this circle 
and Joel's doing the didgeridoo around us and all the people sitting in their benches observing this were looking at us like we were some strange cult or something. Yes, and, that uh, was that was the thing that put the, the icing on the cake. That was the best all part. The, all the other people are like, <laughs> not <laughs> sure. Yeah. What are these weirdos? Just some weird <laughs> cult in a circle. And this and Joel going around with that amazing, yeah, he is dual. an amazing didgeridoo player. What can yeah, I yeah. say? I mean, yeah, I, I yeah, I suppose and at he some plays point, two the, of them at the, the same video, time. Yeah, the, the video the will time. surface of me trying to eat a sandwich with him <laughs> playing the didgeridoo right behind my head. And I didn't realize he was playing two of them simultaneously. And I was getting confused because I'm thinking, oh, it's coming from over this side. So I was going to turn and then it's coming from this side. Wait a minute. Finally, I just gave up and ate my sandwich. <laughs> so... But, yeah, uh, and then at the end of the circle, he he hit this high pitch finally, and and shut off shut off the sound, and it started imme immediately well, raining right you, afterwards. You've got to you, you don't leave out the detail that as soon as he stops <laughs> playing to didgeridoo, we're all in a circle and we go like this. Yeah, remember we yeah. did this, and right at that moment. Yeah, it starts raining. Yeah, so it, I'm sure that it was just a coincidence, but that most of the people there witnessing that went home thinking they saw some kind of a <laughs> rain making ceremony with a bunch of weirdos. <laughs> yeah. were, and it worked. And drove off and it worked. <laughs> some of them went home and their lives were forever changed. Forever changed. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes. They'll be Guys, telling their children real. and grandchildren <laughs> about <laughs> the weird circle of the circle of weirdos who yep. called down the rain. <laughs> so it Anyways, was a blast. I have to admit, though, at the moment I was thinking, this is pretty bizarre. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you know, we, we go like this. <laughs> and right then we go up like this and start feeling the raindrops on our yeah. hands like, Okay. <laughs> well, uh, all right. <laughs> and all those people that thought we were crazy were grabbing their stuff and running to their cars. Yeah, <laughs> zooming away. That's right. Yep. <laughs> and we're out there like, it's raining. Yay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know, like, it but was, there was we were, this nice grassy oasis, right? We were just in the, yep. in the park area below the well. Yeah, That's we right. were. We was, were, and it had the little channels surrounding it. Yeah. So I mean, it was already set up, perhaps to to do those kind of ceremonies there, maybe. Yeah. Ooh. And was, and quite possibly. Was. That's a good point. That's a very yeah. good point. Yeah, it really was a nice spot mm, where we yeah. stopped to have. I guess was that our last meal together? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it was because yeah. then we parted ways, didn't we? Pretty yeah, much after Tuzigu. After Tuzigu. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah we went that, to Tuzigu and then split up that yeah, was it, definitely a highlight though i gotta say it was, yeah. was i mean we can we can actually say finale. we did a rain dance and created rain so to speak <laughs> yeah well and you know i mean we had perfect weather every moment of the whole tour until the exact moment that we're ready to part company and here comes the rain yeah <laughs> so true. yeah, yeah I it was it was, was great it was great a lot of beautiful moments really beautiful yeah, yeah. So we're definitely going to do it again. So if, if, one, if you guys continued listening, yeah. think that you want to be a team member to some future excursions out to who knows where, um, yeah, just, uh, you know, keep, keep in touch and we'll keep watching because as we organize some things, of course, we will be, uh, putting it out there. That's right. And, and there will probably be a, I think that the chances are very good that early May we will have a, what did we figure, Brad, early May or June to shift the scab lands? Uh, well, yeah, we're looking at moving it to the first full week of May. Um, first, okay, yeah. Back from the second week. Uh, we got to so, speak with the resort and see if we can get that get that all worked out. But, uh, yeah, to, to be able to get to Robert's event in May, we're going to have to right. shift it by, by a week. Yeah, then what we can um, take in six both. months out, so this should, should be able to right. you know, still match everybody's schedule. Yeah. Right. 
Right. Um, and there, there is a, there is an email address that we're still shuffling some of these things to, to get them organized tours at randallcarlson.com. You can email us there. That's much yeah. better than leaving a comment on a video on YouTube. Um, there's so many of those that we, we're getting about 300 per video. So things get lost in the shuffle. If you're starting new with the series series and you make a comment on episode four, um, it just gets lost in the shuffle. So really, uh, you know, we keep telling people, uh, the email is cosmogra- cosmographia 1618 at Gmail. Uh, but if you want to get information specifically about upcoming tours, uh, there's info on the website, but you can email tours, T-O-U-R-S at randallcarlson.com. That's right. And there, there will be other emails we're setting up to sort of sift out what people want to ask about. So there will be, uh, there will be separate emails for that. But for now, you can keep emailing us at Cosmographical1618. And uh, don't forget randallcarlson.com. Get the t-shirts there. We got new t-shirts coming up, white ones and everything else. And check out Robert's website. Links are all in the show notes. Thanks, guys. Great show. Thanks. Yep. Thank you. Awesome. Thank you. Excellent right show. On. We've got one more surprise from the trip that we'll save for the next episode. That's right. Stay yep. tuned. How we do. Yep. Thanks, Robert. See y'all. Thanks, guys. All right. All right. Good night, everyone. Good night, guys. Good night.